Masterminds have been around for a long time, right? But unless you had a bunch of extra income to throw at it, you couldn't be a part of it. Well, we wanted to solve that problem. And so we're bringing Masterminds to you for free. Welcome to Mastermind for the Masses. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, third episode of Mastermind for the Masses and just kind of want to kick things off and see any big wins this week, Shan? Um, I'd probably call out that I got all my tax work done for the year, which is the first time I've ever gotten it done before the start of the next year. Um, yeah. Other than that, I was sick, so not not too much exciting things going on in life. How do you get the tax stuff done before the year is over? That's what I was wondering. I didn't know so, you could do that. So there, you do have to make a couple modifications to the end, like with sales data and uh, maybe some expenses. But in terms of like, so I calculate like all my subscriptions. Um, I calculate um, any like large hardware or like asset expenses, uh, all of that early on. So I don't have to worry about it all in one month because that's generally when I forget things. So this year I made it like an impact to uh, to tackle that before the starting year. So I didn't finish, but yeah, I mean, it's going to take me like an hour whenever it's time to recalculate and get everything back up. Awesome. So you do all your taxes yourself? No, no, definitely not. I uh, I use QuickBooks myself, and then okay. my uh, my CPA does all the the hard stuff. So nice. That is a whole different story. Yeah, it's funny. I. Uh... In the same line, I kind of prepped for 2024 with my own uh, personal planning. So hopefully this upcoming week, I'll be able to focus on kind of an execution plan. But that's my that's my call out for this week. So Colby, what do you got, sir? Any big wins this week? Uh, not, nothing really. Like I said in the last episode, I took some PTO. So I was uh, enjoying the staycation and video game sensation that I was for the whole week. So it was nice. Awesome. Well, I know I know that recharged you, and I think you had a topic you wanted to bring up today, right? Uh, yeah. Um, something I really wanted to pick your guys' brain on was actually just kind of the topic of setting expectations both for yourself and for others to, to some degree. And I think both in like a personal and professional setting, I think like uh, it applies to both as well. Because um, I think something that I have personally struggled with is finding the right balance between feeling extremely productive versus like not productive whatsoever. <laughs> um, and I, I think especially in a professional setting, this is where I struggle with. I feel like I'm, I definitely on my on personal side of uh, my life, I definitely err on just like relaxing, having fun. Obviously, like I said, I had a staycation where I just played video games most of the, most of the time. So uh, there's that side of things, but then at work, like I definitely tend to be like, literally at a hundred the entire workday a lot of the times and i struggle to find like i almost feel guilty sometimes when i take breaks or like when i don't feel like i was like extremely productive during a, a given day and even from like a medium to long-term perspective usually i'm very like ambitious with like timelines and goals that i have but i don't really know if that's always like super good to do um you know because it can kind of lead to burnout on one end but also sometimes just lead you with like really poor expectations for yourself and like your efforts and everything that you put in you almost feel like maybe you didn't get done enough you you know can lead to like low self-esteem all those sorts of things so i was kind of curious like what you guys do or what's your mindset coming into that sort of thing i guess well, I can tell you from my perspective and, you know, I think I have, this is where, you know, being one of the older guys here probably is a benefit, right? I think the longer you live, maybe the, the, the less you feel like you have to kind of live up to someone else's expectations and you, um, you know, kind of internalize that a little bit more and seek kind of that self-satisfaction, I guess. Um, but I don't think this is unique to you, right? I mean, I think it's a pretty common question is, am I being productive enough? And, and also I think on the flip side, right? Am I giving myself enough time to kind of recharge and not be productive every second of every day? Because you're right, you, you will wind up with that burnout. And I think it's unique for the individual and you really have to kind of do a little bit of self-reflection um, and decide what you're okay with. Because what works for me isn't a universal 
um, way to approach it, right? I'm, I might be more comfortable doing a lot all in spurts. And then I like to have kind of a big break in between to recharge my batteries, you know, kind of similar to what you said with your, your week of PTO. Um, some people might look at that as non-productive, but in a way, you know, depending on what it did for you personally and mentally, it could also be a productive activity because you're recharging your batteries to hit the ground running when you come back into the professional workplace. And that's my initial thoughts. I, I don't know, Shane, you have any other ideas or thoughts around that? No, I mean, I'd align pretty, pretty closely to what you said. <clears throat> I think setting expectations has a lot of impact on ambition. I think uh, it, it's tough to to be ambitious at all if you don't have some kind of expectation set. But at the same time, um, if your expectations are too wild or too large, it's almost discouraging. And at that point, if you're setting expectations that you're never hitting, when are you really motivated? Uh, so I, I think it's a perspective thing because myself, I've never really had an issue with setting too high of expectations. It's been more of like making sure I do the steps to actually accomplish what I, I set for those expectations. But I have met quite a few people um, throwing you out there, Josh, that set some pretty <laughs> wild expectations. That, I knew you were talking about me, man. I knew you were. I was like, this is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, I mean, in my experience with, uh, with knowing you over the years, uh, you do set some pretty heavy expectations, but you do them responsibly. Um, I always like to reference your stretch goal uh, mm -hmm. kind of mindset. Uh, so you, you set like a realistic goal and then a stretch goal and having those expectations, like, I, I don't know, kind of manifesting like the crazy, um, awesome expectation of, of things all coming to play and, and hitting like results hard is nice. And it, it could actually impact, um, what you're trying to go after, but at the same time, having more, something more realistic is probably going to keep you sane. So really, uh, I, I kind of skipped that like heavy or or that extreme expectation step, and I think I'm I'm good at measuring um, like like a reality version or a realistic version of expectations for myself. So I I definitely think it's a strategy, 100% it's a strategy. Mm. Yeah, when I think about I, I guess kind of goal setting, right? Um, it, it's exactly what you said, Shan. I have what would I be happy with? And then what do I want to strive for? Because the thing about limits is at best, you're going to hit them. So if you set a limit for yourself, that's as far as you'll ever go. And usually you kind of keep a little bit of buffer between you and that edge in case you need a little bit more somewhere else. So what I try to do is put that limit really far out there uh, so that even if I don't reach it, which I most likely won't, uh, because to your point, I do, you know, have some very high aspirations a lot of the time. Um, I know where I'm going to be happy. So I might, I might set the limit way oh. out there and be okay getting halfway there. Would you, so would you consider expectations versus goals differently in your mind? Like, do you treat them differently? Mm. I know for That's me, I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, ahead, I'm thinking I'm processing Shan's question. It was it was really yeah, good. Yeah. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it is a good question. And I definitely think there are some small distinctions, at least that's my like, instinct off the off the rip of it is just because like with uh, with expectations, it's I don't think of expectations in terms of like lofty goals. I think it's Almost, I view expectations as more day-to-day -day sort of stuff for yourselves. So it's like sort yeah. of like the daily things that you always kind of do that you expect yourself to do. It's never, it's literally like to expect something, right? It's not to strive for something. Uh, I mean, you could have an expectation to hit all of your goals all the time and never miss any of them, right? You could have that sort of thing. But, but yeah, no, I think I, I definitely think it is different to like strive for something loftier that you know is lofty, right? And you because like as soon as you set that goal or that stretch goal, it's a desired outcome, but it's not an expected outcome necessarily. I yeah, guess. yeah. I think, you know, thinking about your question, Shannon, what I would say is my goal in life, um, 
has always kind of been to ensure I'm content, but not complacent, right? So expectations are probably where I land in content, uh, but my goals are what keep me from becoming complacent. So it's, it's hmm. meeting my minimum set of needs with that expectation level, but never being stagnant and staying there unless I'm truly happy with whatever that particular area is in my life. Um, but most of the time I'm always trying to think, okay, it's most likely not perfect. So how can I try to get it a little bit closer to that area? And I think, I think Colby, you mentioned it a couple of minutes ago about, is it different for personal and professional? I would say for me, yes, my personal goals are, different than my professional goals and trying to strike that balance is is key yeah no it makes that makes a lot of sense i think i think the reason too that like i posed it is is definitely is honestly that distinction that i think that is a meaningful distinction between the goals and expectations is because i think expectations are supposed to be healthy in my mind like when i think of an expectation i think of something that should be something that at the end of the day it's leaves you satisfied with your life and with, I guess with more so not necessarily life, but you as a person and what you've achieved, I guess, is more of it. Like, so it's trying to like, how do you set like, maybe it's like a more in comparison with goals and where it's uh, um, like sort of the middle ground almost is maybe it's like what you're talking about, Josh, with like the stretch goal and like the um, sort of, achievable goal or normal goal that you would come to expect. Maybe it is that the expectation is that normal goal that you're setting. But I guess for me, it's just always tough because it feels like you're shortchanging yourself when you do that. Or it's like, it's this nagging voice in my head that's saying like, that's not good enough. Like you're not good enough. You need to strive for more. You can't accept like this level, like your level always needs to be up here. And I guess it, it honestly, maybe it boils down to more. It's how do you, give yourself a healthy enough amount of slack to where, you know, it isn't always like you have to be, you have to be that A level student, I guess, like all the time to, for an example, right? Like if you get a B, it's the end of the world sort of thing, like sort of managing that. Um, I, get, I don't know if it's anxiety or what, but I just like, there's always that feeling I have. And I've tried to like set specifics, right? Like, okay. So it's like, if I can't, emotionally regulate it very well like i'm very biased one way or the other what are some concrete things that i can set in place and measure against that help me stay um unbiased in my evaluation of my performance or like what i'm doing and that's where i really struggle with in a professional setting because i don't know I, I don't know like like i don't you guys have any ideas on like what would be some sort of universal principles or sort of things that you could use as that barometer back to the barometer uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> nice throwback to episode one if you haven't listened <laughs> go check it out that's, um, the, best, that's the best chart <laughs> used in any comparison <laughs> colby i think i think you're talking about almost two two different things right because there's the the eq side of it or the emotional connectedness and, and whether or not you're okay with your performance. And then there is kind of the professional environment where you are gauged uh, by someone else's measuring stick um, sometimes. Um, so I think it, it has to differ. And I totally get where you're coming from with the, you know, the lofty goals. Cause the hard part for me is even though I say I have this like expectation goal that I'm good with those stretch goals is what I'm aiming for and believe can be achieved every time. Um, mm. you know, even, even though I, I kind of talked myself into the fact that it's okay, if I don't completely hit that goal, I don't know if I ever really ever give one up. Right. I just am willing to continue to work at it at a more slow pace, uh, and, and strive for that progress. But that, that kind of is how I look at it from the personal lens, but to your point about the professional lens you know, setting expectations can be a little more difficult because you are not just evaluating yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot more people in control professionally. Yeah. So oh, and it honestly helps too. Like I, I always thought it was easier to manage expectations and everything in a professional setting because I had distinct people to 
look towards almost like unbiased like people that could look at your results and like what you put forward and offer you feedback and critique on like everything that you've done right so it's a very it's very easy to balance yourself out like if you're a super critical person of yourself then having people around you to balance you out is can be really helpful yeah i, yeah, I argue that uh sorry josh no, I, I argue clear that like it's good to to set realistic expectations but at the same time i kind of envy those who have crazy expectations and then actually kind of manifest them right because usually people who are go-getters and they achieve these crazy things is they they have high expectations and really they're not willing to to rest until they hit them unfortunately i think if they they don't have the skill set or like the ter determination to actually achieve them they probably suffer some some uh mental hits but uh yeah i th I, I said that and I kind of take it back, right? I don't take it back, but I think it, it really matters on the person. But if you're able to set extreme expectations and have the mindset to where you, you won't give up until you, know, you reach them, I almost like take goal out of the equation. Like it's no longer a goal. And that's really what to me manifesting um, some kind of outcome really is, is turning it from like a goal into an expectation. Yeah, they Probably say a goal without, without a plan sorry i was just saying they say a goal without a plan is a is a wish right and you're saying basically you've got a plan so it's not a wish anymore it's actually something you're working towards yeah so it's, it's a weird balance i think uh it all depends on someone's personality but um i do envy that and i think sometimes like the reason i don't have um crazy goals in mind or the reason like i i'm not ambitious to the point of like achieving something it's like like a bill gates level is because i don't ever set expectations that high so i'm kind of played a life of lottery when it comes to um goals and achievements but at the same time like i play it safe safe but not safe i don't know it, it's interesting to think about yeah yeah i don't think you're uh, necessarily someone that plays it safe given the fact you've started a few businesses and things like that um yeah but i didn't but just do it intelligently <laughs> i just didn't set expect expectations for them to really con uh, transform my life if they do that's even great if i did maybe it would have happened i don't know i i don't i don't think i fit that personality of being able to manifest something like a lot of people um a lot of like people who manage their own uh, masterminds or podcasts they're able to do and they make it look easy um i don't necessarily think i i match with them to that kind of energy level but at the same time maybe i'm just a bit more realistic and maybe they're just a bit more lucky who knows hard to say i got one more thought around this and then i do i do have a second question for colby but so for me because i i tend to be that wild dreamer that I do set a lofty goal. You know, I expect us to have 1 million subscribers tomorrow. You know, that's, that's my target. Right. Um, but the way I think of it is every, every thing that was ever accomplished at any point, call it whichever one you want. It all started with kind of the same person in the same place. I mean, yes, there's a, there's a nature element of it. You know, we're all born with certain skills and talents, but, it's like I tell my kids, you can do anything as long as you're willing to put in the work for it. So if you if you try to go be a professional basketball player, but you don't actually ever practice, you know, 12 hours a day, like a lot of those guys do, you're never going to have a shot at it. Um, but if you're willing to kind of put the effort in, we all kind of start at a similar playing field. Now, there is, again, there's natural talent, and I get that piece, and, and someone that has a lot of talent, uh, naturally, if they do 12 hours and I do 12 hours, they're going to, they're going to smoke me every time. There's no, no comparison there. But, uh, if they put in zero hours and I put in 12, I might have a shot at overcoming them. Right. So I think, I think it's a combination of effort, um, along with being willing to take your shot. Yeah. So Colby, what I was curious about, right. You know, we, we've talked a lot about kind of how to balance that personally and professionally, but have you have you seen it in the workplace because i know you've you've had kind of a rapid acceleration where you are now even to your your lead role um like have you 
felt the need to kind of redefine expectations as you climbed up the, the quote unquote corporate ladder? Or um, do you feel like they stayed consistent as you went along? Um, I would say my mind had, my mindset really hasn't changed around it. And I think, I think at a certain point I just, I like take stock and I just realize how tired I am at certain points. Like I definitely have to like have moments where like I take a deep breath and I kind of relax for a bit. Cause when I, especially when I get into a new role, all I can think about is everything that I'm going to do to make it way better than it was when I first came into it. It's always been like my thing going into something is just cause like I had expectations for being, you know, way further up the, the chain than, than where I started. And then I, you know, I had certain goals in mind and I knew that to get to those goals, I had to essentially, like if I wanted to do it fast, I had to sort of shine out from the rest of the pack. Like you, if you want to, or if you just do what everyone else does, you just get the same results everyone else gets. And so I kind of had the mindset that I had to do. I had to always do extra stuff wherever I was at. And that really hasn't stopped even at the, even where I'm at right now, it's always just trying to think what could be better, what could be different, what could be improved, how could I be min maxing my performance at work? Like, what do I waste time on? Like, it's always just like, that's like my mindset towards everything. Um, so yeah, no, it, it hasn't really changed. And I guess, I kind of like was evaluating just my total evaluation of that whole process and what I do. And should that be different? Should I consider other variables? Should I approach things differently? Um, it's always like my thinking, right? Cause it's like you, I think it's hard sometimes to you, you know how you feel, but just cause you feel a certain way and just cause you're doing a certain thing doesn't mean other people feel the same way and other people are feeling the same things and maybe they do it better than you, you know, maybe they have a better way of, they have a better outlook. They have a better process. So it's always just kind of interesting to to get that perspective. So really owning the the outcomes of what you're doing, but you know, what about owning, I guess the the process as you go through that expectation? Because in you know, corporate environment or in a business setting, those expectations sometimes aren't set by you; they're they're placed on you. So um, do either of you have strategies around how to kind of, I guess, navigate through expectations being placed on you that maybe don't align with what your individual expectations are? Or have you been in a scenario like that? I mean, yeah. go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, we've all been in a position to where we've had responsibilities um, with a certain level of uh, expectation and work involved that might not necessarily uh, be related to kind of what you uh, foresee in the position, the kind of what Colby was mentioning, like you want to elevate the position you're in, you want to change it up and do things in a more proficient manner, but you're also expected to accomplish the things that are already set in stone, whether, you know, that'd be some kind of like manual work or whether it'd be something that you don't seem is, is valuable to the company versus like you kind of finding a better way to do it. Uh, I think that can be tough. And I have been put in that position, especially by um, when I've worked for usually, I don't want to say this, I don't want to sound mean, but usually when I worked for um, an older boss, and I say older, like, like over like 60, like, and I've been in that position just like twice. You know? <laughs> I'm not in the older category. I love it. <laughs> I think, um, I think your expectations are, are more like oriented to what usually that demographics used to which is kind of like just the grind not necessarily the innovation um so there is it's been rough and it's been a, only like a couple situations in life and i'm digging like back to practically that back to like my early 20s and teens but um when you said like have you ever been dealt in the scenario where like you've had expectations put upon you and they're not necessarily easy to manage. That's the first thing I thought of. Um, and then that strategy, really, I guess you're going to have to try to find the balance, right, of, of handling the expectations put on you and then setting your own, um, I don't know if it would be like in an ambitious manner or just like giving you some kind of like personal professional goal. So that was the first thing that came to mind uh, for me. But what about you, Colby? Mm. I think for me, it's, I don't think I've ever 
gone into position and I thought this was way too unreasonable. Um, I think usually I like build the position to make it unreasonable at a certain level. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I have, uh, but I have gone into a position. And I thought, man, I'm not enough. Like with a sense that I, if I didn't change a single thing about how I approach my job right now, I would not, I would be underperforming expectations uh, for the position and what they want from me. I've definitely felt that like in a job before where I was just like, this is overwhelming. Like I need to improve. Right. And I've, I've definitely felt that multiple times. Um, but the feeling is always not that like, Oh, it's too much. It's just that, Oh, I need to be better. Like I, there's stuff I need to improve on. People have done this job before, so it's doable. So I just need to figure out how to do it sort of thing. Um, and that's kind of been my mentality of how I deal with that. It's more just kind of a way of dealing with stress where it's like, it's problem solving. It's not dealing with stress, I guess. It's like, uh, it's kind of gamifying it. I'm very, uh, I have like a really, I love games and I'm very addicted to solving them and min maxing their potential and everything. And in a lot of the ways I treat work like that, where I come in and I try to do that same thing. And that's kind of how I've dealt with it mentally, at least for me at work. Colby, are you one of those guys who like literally there's like 11 side quests and generally like one main <laughs> quest and you're just going to like, like tackle a hundred percent of the side quest before you even finish the main quest or even after, like you're just one of those people who just don't. So, yeah. So lot. when I started off gaming, I was actually just a main quest person because, uh, yeah uh because i usually just play shooters um so i wasn't really even like the type of the person that would play those types of games but nowadays i'm definitely more like the the side quest guy like i've been playing Baldur's gate and that game has like a million side quests that you can go on for an eternity so so yeah i'm yeah. definitely like that now i feel like colby's the guy that would kind of make up his own side quest too it's not even in the game and he's just like i bet i can you know make this impossible jump somehow <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I just find that stuff super fun. And for me, it's always just blended. Like, I actually think I've developed so many work skills from gaming. Uh, like, unironically, I think I've learned so much about life and about, like, working and myself through playing video games just because of the way I play them. Like, I don't play them like a brain off, like, sort of thing. It's, like, very, like like brains on like 100 focus like it's, i'm very into them and yeah like i've definitely i have applied a lot of principles and thought patterns etc to work life that i have done in gaming funnily enough hopefully grand theft auto is not included in that one <laughs> no no <laughs> not, not that one not that one <laughs> i actually i do think a lot of your personality comes out in the way you game too um which dude this makes this is such a funny analogy now that we bring it up because Josh, like it's the first thing I think about is when we had that, um, that uh, Super Smash Brothers competition. Mm. And, like Josh just had to win. And the, I don't even know if the man's ever touched the game before, but um, just literally became like top five in like two weeks. And it just was not enough. Like you could just see the disappointment on his face. <laughs> So, yeah, when I was younger, and I'm talking the original Smash Brothers came out, I played that a lot. And so I knew the basic concept. I just had to kind of learn the, the, change the new controllers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, most of the keys were the same. It was just getting used to the controller because I'm talking the original would have been on a Nintendo 64. So it was like that weird yeah, like pronged controller thing. Yeah. So, but... Yeah, no. um. I think there's a lot of personality in the way in the way you game. I think you can tell a lot from someone. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's you know what you're you kind of are leveraging your strengths and your passions and applying that to how you get things done, right? You've got these innate skill sets, and for me, I like to check boxes, right? Like I, I'm one of those guys. I don't necessarily have to have a list, but if I do, I'm crossing things off, right? Or I'm mm -hmm. deleting things. Like that's what I like to do, and so for me. When the when the Super Smash Brother game tournament came up, it was okay. The new item on the list is wit, <laughs> and so uh, and with of course going back to what we talked about earlier, my lofty goal was yes, I haven't touched this game in probably over a decade, but yeah, I can beat these guys that play regularly, no problem. So, yeah. uh, but to your point, coming in top five or wherever I landed, you know, it felt pretty good too. So those minimum yeah. expectations were met. Uh, even though I was shooting for, you know, the, the number one spot. 
Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, that came to mind as soon as we started talking about it. <laughs> I'm weird with video games. Like, uh, I mean, and really, I don't, I don't play too many like um, adventurous or RPG style games. But like, whenever I do play any kind of game that has like a main quest and you can do any side quests, like I'm one of those people who are like tackling like uh, the the side quests that you're not, you're like six levels behind from even being able to like to do them, yeah. five seconds like one hit you're dead and i'm just like i'll spend <laughs> like three hours straight before i give up on that and and the reason i don't know i think the reason why i do that is because i want to be like in the best position to beat the uh main campaign or the main like quest of the game like like mm. all powerful you know like have the highest yeah. stats everything um, you want to goomba stomp the last boss yeah exactly yeah. Uh, i do things unorthodox for sure yeah. Um, but it all because sometimes I don't finish games because I'll get so stuck up <laughs> on, on that. But anyway, but it's all. I mean, you know, if I can go a little non, uh, I guess technical, right? Even the board game of life. I mean, they made a game to simulate life, and and you know, life's nothing if it's not fun, right? So I mean, turn it into a game, which. You know, I think it, it definitely helps mm -hmm. to just kind of keep you moving forward. Because if you get stuck in the minutia of every day and, and you do get stuck in this kind of like trying to live up to someone else's expectations and lose sight of just enjoying life, that can really drain you and lead you to that burnout quicker than anything that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. And, yeah. and there's nothing worse uh, than being stuck in a role that you don't want to be in when you're burned out and you don't really see i guess the the way to the next level if i can throw back the game analogy i would argue that it's important to know when to not meet expectations and i guess if you're in a position where you're not happy or you're not working professionally where you want to work you don't even like see any um any self-reward for meeting those expectations like it's, it's healthy at that time to to know when to not try to meet some expectations and waste any time, really. Yep. I think I've been in that scenario once or twice. It's a solid point. It's interesting. I was uh, I was thinking back to like the whole goals versus expectations things, and like just from this conversation, like I think part of it is um, being results oriented versus being process oriented kind of what you were mentioning Josh earlier is that it feels weird like I'm very I'll chase certain goals right in personal life but you know I I feel more focused on just process of like you know you go to the gym five days a week it doesn't matter like what you do you just go five days a week you you make your meals three days a week you know you, you go to bed and you wake up at the same time like it's very you know just procedural things just make sure you do them each week and that helps you out in life over the course of three to five years right like if you do that consistently all the time you know you'll be way better off uh you know for the coming years that sort of mindset whereas like at work or i mean even outside of work sometimes you fixate on a goal so much that you don't it's almost like you don't give yourself credit for all the stuff that you did to accomplish it or even try to accomplish it and so if you everything is resting on succeeding or failing at the goal like i'm meeting the goal and then if you don't meet it everything else was just a waste of time like you know it's like yeah but it's not it's i mean it's there's all the value is actually in the the point leading up to hitting the goal that's why you need a new goal as soon as you meet it is just all the fun all the you know the interesting things and stuff that you learn is everything in between but it's it's so i think it's just hard to to keep that in mind while chasing the goal as well. It's the journey, not the destination. Mm -hmm. But from I think I think one thing that I, I want to interject here and, and I'd be curious to hear your guys' thoughts around it too, but you know, because I can see it from both sides. I and mean, the process and, and making progress is so important, but if you don't know where you're headed and what results you're chasing after, that can also be a challenge, right? So in my mind, what has always helped me, I guess, maintain clarity around what I was trying to accomplish was, and maybe why I'm okay when I only 
hit the expectations and not the goal is what are my priorities in life? And, you know, as long as every decision I'm making aligns with that and doesn't somehow put those at risk for me, you know, like my family obviously is, is huge. It's, I could, I could work a hundred hours a week and not spend any time with them, but then I run a real risk of, you know, those relationships getting damaged or, you know, not being there at all. And that's never going to be worth it to me. So having the priorities known and let that guide those processes towards a goal has been a super effective strategy for me. But do you guys think that priorities also play a factor in when for you when you're kind of chasing after those processes or goals? So it's kind of like having a safety net, like there's like a baseline that you're always happy with. And then so then when you stretch for these other things, even if you fail to achieve it, you're still left at like a baseline that you're acceptable with, essentially. Right. What can I live without? I, I don't want to live without my, my family or, or, you know, other things that are important to me, but I can live without an additional promotion. I can live without, um, you know, a multi-million dollar podcast if I have to, uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, Wait, honestly, those are the things that I could live without because financial, there's always going to be a way to get some more finances if, if you had to. There's always going to be a way to get more stuff, but none of that. It's, you know, if I'm, if my house caught on fire, I'm not grabbing the TV and making sure it's safe. I'm, I'm grabbing, you know, everything that I can't replace and, you know, I, my family, but, you know, that's what I'm going after um, because those are things that I can't earn again. I can't get back. I can't, you know, so for me, that's, that's kind of the driving force. And then as long as I'm always keeping that at the center, where I ultimately wind up professionally or personally with those goals, I'm, I'm going to be happy because I haven't sacrificed the most important for me. That makes sense. That's actually a really interesting way of phrasing it that I hadn't really thought. It's not, not thinking about what you want. It's like thinking about what you can't, be without essentially yeah it helps put, put things in perspective for sure so um no that was a great question colby did we kind of answer everything you were trying to to get out of that today or any other elements that you wanted us to touch on before we wrap up with our final thoughts mm, no that was that was pretty much it um yeah i mean i don't really think there's like a a solid answer to the question that's like a definitive like do this do that sort of thing it's definitely just a more philosophical i guess approach to to life really at the end of the day but um no yeah, yeah. you guys definitely did a good job of providing your perspective on it so it super valuable the answer is a thought process for sure and i think that's a solid like like that's a justifiable answer for yeah a question that that's that's really you know kind of broad in a sense yeah answer with the thought process yeah all right well uh this has been super illuminating but i i do i have a kind of a, a final thought that i'll throw out here but you know i think when it comes to expectations and goals and, and really even reality and, and when we talked about priorities a lot of it comes down to perception and we touched on this briefly earlier but you know who is setting your expectations is it is it you setting your expectations or is it something externally setting those expectations for you do those align and if not similar to what shan said earlier you, you should take some stock and evaluate if where you're at is the right place to be and if it is great um if it isn't then obviously make that goal make that plan understand what your expectations are and then start to make progress towards that by trusting in the process and moving forward. So yep. That's my my final thought for today. I don't know if you guys want to add anything in there as well. No, we didn't. Uh, I don't. I really don't. I don't want to prolong it, but um, we didn't talk about really like voicing your expectations. So uh, the last thing I throw in there is like, don't bottle them up. You know, it's it's hard for for you to um expect to meet certain expectations that you're the only one that even knows about them right especially when 
uh, you might be working for like a corporation or you might be working for someone who's who has those expectations that align perfectly with what you said, um, Josh, that you, you don't want to avoid voicing them because then you're put in the position to where like I had no idea you were ambitious about a promotion. I had no idea you were um, goal oriented to the point to where like you expected to receive a certain raise this year. Um, I didn't even have it in mind. You never know what environment you might be in for like those kind of expectations to be tracked. So that's the last thing I would throw in there um, that we didn't touch on too much is just try to voice them as heavily as you can. Yeah, that's a solid point. Yeah, because if you aren't clear about your expectations, how can you hold someone accountable to meeting them? Or yourself. Yeah, true. Too. Valid. Colby? Uh, yeah, I mean, a similar vein, like when it comes to like figuring, I think that's honestly a really hard part is taking the time to figure out um I guess realizing, because I feel like everyone has expectations for themselves. They're just sometimes not um, vocalized or uh, what's the term where it's like implicit, but it's not, it's not like explicitly understood by them. They just, it's like an implicit, like subconscious thing that controls them and their behavior. And I think if you feel like you are that, that type of person where you are kind of like just doing things because that's just how you've done them for a while, I definitely think it's important to like if you don't have the habit already like you know take five minutes even a day either at night or in the morning recommend a night because it's probably when you're the most contemplative to just think about your thoughts for the day and how it went and what you want and just have that like little bit of time to explore what it is that you would even want in life and that can kind of help to shape understanding what your expectations are and what goals you want to have brilliant well, we'd love to hear if we're meeting your expectations uh, with this podcast. So please, you know, comment here. We're available anywhere you listen to your podcast, whether that's Patreon, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. We're pretty much anywhere you want to be. And we would love to hear your feedback, hear any questions you'd like us to talk about or any topics you'd like us to talk about. Love to talk about those uh, on this podcast with you. Um, so, uh also subscribe, leave us a uh, five-star rating if you think we are worthy of such, and we'll see you here next week. Thanks, everyone.